May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Advent is one of my favorite seasons. I say one of them as if it's not, or rather as if there's a great many of them on the church's calendar, and also as if I couldn't probably give you a reason for why just about each one of them is a favorite season of mine. The reason that Advent is a favorite season, though, is because it's full of paradoxes. It is itself a paradox. As I'm sure many of you have heard at least once before, Advent is the time that is already, but not yet. It gives us time to really let it sink in that the creator of all things took on the nature of the created and became human. It reminds us in our waiting for the feast of Christmas that Christ has come, and now we are waiting for his coming again. It is a liminal season to remind us of this liminal age that we find ourselves in. Another thing about Advent that isn't quite a paradox, but it is a bit of a contradiction, is that while we are making ourselves ready for the joy of the nativity, surrounded by the holiday cheer, time with family and friends, food and festivities, presents, watching cheesy Hallmark movies by the fire, that one might just be me, and drinking maybe a little too much eggnog. While all of this is happening, Advent comes in and reminds us of the four last things. Among those last things is judgment. You might not be thinking that judgment is a bold word choice for a seminarian, especially a seminarian preaching for the first time on a Sunday morning. (laughs) I know that that word can bring up some not so positive feelings. It has some baggage that comes with it, but hang in there with me. If you're like me, then this word can in fact make you feel a little uncomfortable, because it makes me feel uncomfortable. Because it conjures up an image of God that I'm not much of a fan of, an image that doesn't feel right. It's an image that doesn't fit. It seems like yet another one of Advent's contradictions, our good and loving God coming in judgment. But perhaps it's not so much of a contradiction. After shaking off the initial bad vibes that that word gave me while I was preparing the sermon, I was reminded of some wisdom from one of my professors. She told us that judgment is a good thing. And it's a good thing because it means that Christ wins, that truth wins, that goodness wins, and that love wins. To me, that is a helpful reminder when news events get me down or when life in general gets me down as it wants to do from time to time. When the weight of despair gets to be a little heavy, I remember that God, with God's good judgment, is making all things new and can work anything for my good, even if I think that nothing good can possibly come. And I try my best to trust God's good judgment. But in the gospel reading for today, we read about the beginning of John the Baptist's ministry. Another little quirk of Advent, we don't actually read anything related to Christ's birth until the fourth Sunday. For today, however, we hear about John the Baptist coming with his message of baptism of repentance. Again, another fun word to go along with judgment. Repentance, of course, comes from the Greek word metanoia, meaning a change of heart or a change of opinion. Repentance is a reorienting through the change of heart towards God and what God wills. What then might it be that God wills? Well, if judgment is the overcoming of all the woes of the world by God's truth, God's goodness, and God's love, then I would hazard a guess that it is, in fact, truth, goodness, and love that God wills. The Baptist might then be calling those who hear his message to reorient themselves to the will of God when he says to repent. His message would then be to have a change of heart, to reconsider and reorient towards love. Even more so than this, He calls his hearers to make ready Jesus' path by doing this. He tells them to prepare the way of the Lord by orienting towards love. Of course, it is Christ who models for us the perfect example of love. In Christ, we see love as commitment to the other. It is putting the good of that other before our own. It is sacrificial. One of the meditations of Advent is on God sacrificing the glories of heaven to be born in a manger. And love can be hard. It can be a hard choice that we make every single day, but it is a choice that has the potential to change the world. And that might have the potential to sound a little too idealistic, but think for a moment on how much the world is changed by God's love, by God's commitment to us 
and by God's loyalty to us. By God's viewing of us, his creation, as worth every effort and worth every thought, and as worth his coming to us as Christ, precisely to model to us that love. And, in a very real sense, to prepare our way. To open up for us the way to himself, to make that way accessible. Think about how the world is made better by God's actions in the past, God's actions now in the present, and what it is that God will do in the future in God's own good judgment. And so to then make ready the way the Lord's coming is repentance or reorientation towards the love that Christ models for us. This message is as important to us now as much as it was then to those hearing John the Baptist preach on the banks of the Jordan River. Christ has come, but Christ will come again. It is up to us then to make ready the way of the Lord by turning ourselves over to God, by reordering ourselves to God's will of truth, goodness, and love. It is up to us to prepare Christ's way because God desires to reorient the world for truth, goodness, and love, which is good news to me, that while I am working by God's grace to make a difference in myself and in my community, God is at work doing the same. God is also at work to make a difference in me and in my community. God really is at work preparing the way. And this is good news because it can seem so difficult at times, especially at this time of the year, when in the middle of our celebrating we cannot help but also remember those who have no family to go home to, no home to return to, not enough to make ends meet, and even those without anything to keep them warm. And especially in light of the last two years, perhaps home is a little emptier than it was before. But this world and all of its beauty can also be so sad and scary at times that there is still so much work to be done, it can all seem so daunting. But God is at work too, while God is also calling us to our own work. But God is working too. John the Baptist calls us to align our own wills and desires to God's will and desires, and so make ready the way of Christ. And then, the voice crying out in the wilderness, as in Isaiah says, that every valley will be filled, and every mountain and hill be made low. Rough ways will be made straight. I certainly can't fill in any valleys. I can't make low a mountain. That is the work of God. God is the only one who can bring about that type of leveling, that type of equalizing. But I can choose love. With God's help and by God's grace, we can choose love. If we do choose love, if we, like Baruch says, put on the robe of righteousness that comes from God, that is preparing the way, that is preparing the way for God to show all flesh God's salvation because God is love. By showing love, by showing goodness, and by showing truth, we show God for all the world to see. And in preparing the way, God can come in and move mountains, the mountains that we could never move on our own because we know that God's judgment is good and it is God's goodness that prevails. In this Advent season, with news of developing variants of the coronavirus, as our country continues to go through changes, as we look around and see the ways we've fallen short in our choosing of love, as we wonder what Jesus meant when he said that the kingdom is at hand because the kingdom can at times seem so far away, remember that the way is still being made ready. God is still leveling the mountains that seem insurmountable. God is still raising up the valleys and the deep places and when we align ourselves with God's vision of love, truth, and goodness, the kingdom gets just a little bit closer. When we become voices in the wilderness ourselves, when we align ourselves with God's vision of what the kingdom should be, if we trust that the good work that God has already begun in us will be brought to completion, we will really then be preparing the way of the Lord. And all the nations will see the salvation of God when Christ comes again in the glory of mercy and righteousness. Amen.